வணக்கம் வெல்கம் டு திஸ் வீடியோ ஆன் பயோமெக்கானிக்ஸ் வி ஹவ் பின் லுக்கிங் அட் மெக்கானிக்ஸ் ஆஃப் பயாலஜிக்கல் மெட்டீரியல்ஸ் இன் த ப்ரீவியஸ் வீக்ஸ் வி ஹவ் லுக்ட் அட் போன் ஃபார் எக்ஸாம்பிள் அண்ட் த பிஹேவியர் ஆஃப் போன் ஆஸ் அ பயாலஜிக்கல் மெட்டீரியல் அண்ட் வி செட் தட் வி ஹவ் அசியூம்ட் ஃபார் மோஸ்ட் பார்ட் போன் இஸ் அ ரிஜிட் பாடி and uh, perform some analysis but uh, bone undergoes changes dependent on time right its uh, elastic behavior changes depending on time this is called as visco elasticity time dependent deviation or changes in the material behavior due to time this is called viscoelasticity or materials that exhibit both viscous and elastic behavior okay. so in this class or in this video we will be looking at uh, the characteristics of an ideal spring and an ideal dash pot what is creep what is stress relaxation what is hysteresis these three are manifestations of viscoelasticity and response of a perfect spring and a perfect dash pot viscoelasticity is a critical mechanical behavior it turns out that most viscous materials dissipate or expend energy for example friction is one of the manifestations of viscous behavior many materials show both viscous and elastic characteristics although uh, most engineering materials we consider as elastic materials or viscous materials we model them as either elastic or viscous so from an engineering view point or many engineering materials tend to show either elastic or viscous behavior but biological materials such as bones or tendons ligaments soft tissues such as tendons ligaments cartilage or relatively harder tissues such as bone usually or almost always show visco elastic behavior that is they show both viscous characteristics and elastic characteristics which makes it slightly difficult slightly challenging to model okay so that means that modeling of these materials if you use only an elastic model for the bone for example that is not going to capture the entire behavior there are going to be cases where this is not going to work there are going to be situations in which this model is not going to be completely true where it, this model is going to fail you it is useful to know the regions or the ranges of forces or ranges of uh, uh, environments in which this might not work but what's more useful is to model the bio materials as visco elastic materials so for our models we use an ideal spring an ideal dash pot of course when you say ideal that means that uh, most practical materials including engineering materials are not ideal we understand that but uh, you'll have to start your modeling somewhere so an ideal spring shows perfectly harmonic elastic behavior and it's modeled by this uh, you know by this equation f is kx or f as a function of time f of t is k times x of t where k is the spring constant okay x is the harmonic response the displacement at the end of the spring so that is uh, you know there is uh, displacements that you are measuring which is x and k is the constant of proportionality usually the spring constant the ideal dash pot is exhibiting this perfect viscous behavior 
that is it shows resistance to velocity right so the ideal dash part shows perfect viscous behavior that is f is proportional to velocity that is f is cv where c is the constant of proportionality and v is the velocity what is v in terms of displacement that is x dot is it not or dx by dt so if i am writing the force as a function of time f of t then f of t is c times the velocity v of t or rather c times d x of t by d t where c is a constant which is the constant of proportionality that is essentially damping due to viscosity or it is a viscous damping constant right. and uh, d x by d t or x dot is the velocity is it not we know this this is another notation for velocity d x by d t is x dot right. so what we notice here is that uh, dash part behavior depends on velocity right, or the velocity of with which you move that means the more the velocity the more will be the force that will be felt right. but not displacement right whereas uh, spring it is the displacement or the deformation that plays a role for uh, dash part it is not the displacement but rather the velocity that plays a crucial role uh, these are of course ideal models so most materials including some of the engineering materials will not show these ideal behavior so if you take even an ideal spring it might not show the ideal uh, behavior so there must there are some regions within which it will show this ideal behavior after which it may not show this ideal behavior so something to keep in mind but here we are interested in looking at uh, some building blocks some ideal materials that we take or an ideal building blocks that we take and then we use this to further build our models okay now what are some manifestations of viscoelasticity what would happen if a material is viscoelastic right so when you apply a stress or a force and you maintain that stress right strain continues even after the stress is maintained at a constant level that is the strain continues to increase with increase of time so as time passes the strain continues to increase but the stress itself is not increased so the force itself is not increased the force is applied and then maintained at a high level not increased but the deformation continues to increase this is called as creep okay this is called as creep then when you apply a deformation or a strain and you maintain this deformation then a stress is developed immediately and this stress is very high the stress that is developed is immediate and uh, at a high level but as time passes the stress keeps going down in the case of stress application the stress is applied and uh, the deformation field keeps on going up as a uh, as time passes with passage of time with passage of time the strain keeps on increasing that is creep but when you apply a strain the stress development is immediate and with passage of time the stress keeps going down or it relaxes right that is called stress relaxation relaxation of stress right and then you have an interrelated uh, quantity or an interrelated uh, parameter which is hysteresis when you apply stress and then you release the strain behavior right or the loading and unloading behavior in the stress strain cycle are not exactly reversible that means the path that you take to increase the strain and to decrease the strain 
are different. So, there is path dependency in the stress strain curve. This will lead to a situation in which there is an area in the stress strain curve that is uh, where uh, you know that that is enclosed by the path taken right so because of this reason the energy that is expended in developing the strain is not completely recovered in the viscoelastic material so some of the energy is dissipated some of the energy is gone it's something that you cannot recover right so some but not all of the work done right, in the loading process is recoverable during unloading. Right. So, that means as you increase the stress, the strain increases, as you decrease the stress, the strain decreases but in a different path. So, some of the energy is lost, this is called as hysteresis okay, or hysteresis. So, to explain, when you apply stress you apply a stress immediately and you maintain at a constant level the strain development is immediate but then as uh, in a in an ideal uh, spring for example you would expect this kind of a behavior is it not but that's not what is happening it goes to a high level and with the passage of time it continues to increase right it continues to increase so, this is called creep behavior, this is called creep. So, there is a difference with passage of time, there is a difference in behavior with time, which is why viscoelasticity is a time de dependent deviation. This is why viscoelasticity is called as time dependent deviation in material behavior. So, with passage of time, the strain felt keeps increasing this is called creep now when you apply a strain right or a deformation the development of force or uh, stress is almost immediate but as time passes there is relaxation okay there is a relaxation why is this happening you would you would expect that uh, the stress developed is this and then it is maintained at this high level but there is time dependent deviation in the material behavior in which the stress keeps decreasing as a function of time and then maybe it settles down at a different lower level but there is a time dependent drop in this behavior okay this is called st stress relaxation or in other words the stress is relaxed or the stress is reduced stress relaxation okay And then you have path dependency, one is time dependency, the other is path dependency. So, I am loading, okay. I am loading in this path, then I am increasing the strain in this path and then I am decreasing it. As I am decreasing it, I would expect, I would expect that the material return back like this in an elastic material. If it is an elastic material, as I am increasing the strain, the stress increases and then as I am decreasing, it will come back in the same path. Actually, I'm, I have not even drawn the same path, but along the same line. But in a viscoelastic material, what happens is that as I am unloading, that is the path that is taken by the unloading curve. That means, only some of the energy that is expended in uh, loading is recoverable that is the blue lines are the ones that are recoverable and the red lines uh, and the area that is uh, shaded in red that work or that energy is lost okay this is called as hysteresis right so there is path dependency so the way you go and the way you return will lead to a situation in which there is a loss of energy. Right. This is something that is not expected in a perfectly elastic material. Right. So, this is a, a manifestation of viscoelasticity. Here, 
what is shown is a plot between strain rate and a plot between strain rate and elastic modulus. Remember, elastic modulus is a relationship between stress and strain, but it turns out in some material, in this case the material used is bovine articular cartilage, it is a biological material, it is articular cartilage of cow. Right? So, in this material with the change in the rate of application of strain, as I change the rate of application of strain, the modulus or the elastic modulus changes. It is not the stress that is changing. Depending on the rate at which I am applying the strain, the modulus itself changes. For a perfectly elastic material, modulus is a constant. This is something that we have seen in previous classes. Right? The modulus is a constant for an elastic material. But in a viscoelastic material, depending on the rate at which I am loading and unloading, depending on the rate at which I am applying the strain, there is change in the elastic modulus. This obviously is not an elastic material. This is a manifestation of viscoelastic behavior. So, in other words, this is time dependent or rate dependent change in elastic behavior. So, depending on, so the same amount of strain when you apply at two different rates, the response will be different. The applied strain is the same, but the rate at which you apply, whether you apply it fast or whether you apply it slow, depending on that the modulus will be different. That means, it is not the strain that is having a major effect or it is it, the strain might have some effect, but it is not only the strain that is having an effect, but the rate at which you, you apply the strain also has an effect, right? something to keep in mind, which is why the y axis is not stress, the y axis is elastic modulus. So, the modulus itself changes that means, this behaves as different elastic materials at different strain rates, so it is not a single material or it is not a single elastic material or in other words this material exhibits rate dependency or dependency of applied strain rate that is it is an viscoelastic material or this is one of the manifestations of viscoelasticity. How would a perfect spring respond? Well, a perfect spring if I apply a stress if I apply a stress, I would expect a, a corresponding change in strain and then it goes up and it stays up and then it goes down. As it goes down, the strain also goes down. What about stress relaxation? Suppose I, suppose I apply a strain or a deformation. As the strain increases, as the strain increases, the stress also increases, the force felt also increases and then as the strain is at a constant, the force felt also remains at this constant. Why is that? Because this force is k x, is it not? And uh, we know that this deformation is f by k because the force applied and uh, the spring constant does not change, the force applied changes according to this characteristic, strain will follow the stress. Likewise, the force applied is uh, or the force felt is a function of the spring constant times the displacement and I am applying a displacement and uh, the force felt will be f is equal to kx as you would expect. This is the ideal spring characteristic, right? This is a perfect spring or an ideal spring, of course. Of course, we saw what happens uh, during the application of stress or strain in a viscoelastic material. Right. What would happen? You would expect that you would expect that in an elastic material you would expect this to be the characteristic, but in a viscoelastic material what you see is that the strain will go up and then as a function of time the strain continues to go up al although the stress itself remains a constant. This is called creep. This is creep in a viscoelastic material. 
and in a viscoelastic material the stress relaxation would be like this. The stress increases and with passage of time it relaxes to a new constant low level. Okay. What about a perfect dash pot? Right? In a perfect dash pot what you would expect is you are applying a uh, stress, okay. you are applying a stress and then you are maintaining it at a constant level. Right? Remember what is uh, f is c x dot is it not? In a perfect dash part f is equal to c x dot that is the equation relating velocity and force is it not? So, now I am applying a force or a stress and I am maintaining at a constant level and then I am removing ok. Then the strain will be it will be such that the velocity will be constant like this. So, you are applying right as you are applying x dot is f by c, x dot is f by c, but what is plotted here is x the response is x or the strain that is plotted since x dot rewriting this x dot is f by c here. Since it is not x that is constant, but rather x dot this is what you will find right. and if I apply a strain, if I apply a strain that is x, what would be the force that will be felt because that will be an integral right that has to happen that has to happen immediately or in time 0 which is going to be this direct delta function right. In, a, in an extremely small amount of time an extremely large amount of force is developed which can be characterized or modeled by using this direct delta function. Okay. Of course, this is for a perfect dash part. We will have to see what happens in the in the non ideal dash part. So, in this video we saw what is an ideal spring, what is an ideal dash part, we saw what is creep and what is stress relaxation and what is hysteresis and we saw the response by a perfect spring and a perfect dash part. With this we come to the end of this video. Thank you very much for your attention.